But he says like this. Then Jesus, they promised Jesus in, unto the place called Gethsemane. And said unto his disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. Mm. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Mm. And then said unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful even unto death. Tell ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh Father, O oh my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I, not as I will, but as thy will. And he cometh unto the disciples and find them sleeping. And he said unto Peter, What could thou ye not could what could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Amen? Amen. My subject or uh, topic or uh, title is Where is your Gethsemane? When I asked a question earlier about being to the cross, everybody puts their hand. It's easy to come to the cross and say, I receive you, Jesus, as my personal savior. And we all say we are born again. Yeah. But you see, reading this subject about Jesus, a place called Gethsemane, is where the flesh and the spirit have a battle. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. You see, unless you have been to Gethsemane, go to the cross doesn't mean a lot. Hello. Yeah. Because you see, the cross is a place where we know we can be saved. Our spirit is safe. But what about the flesh? We heard a little bit about this morning. About uh, denying the flesh. Mm. About crucifying the flesh. We talk about it. We speak about it. But do we really understand what we mean? You see, Gethsemane for Jesus was made a hundred percent man, hundred percent God. The flesh was weak, but the spirit was willing. Sometimes we have to get to a place called Gethsemane. Yeah. And if you have not been to the place of Gethsemane, it means you are stuck at raging in the flesh. Yeah. The flesh is still growing its supply. Mm -hmm. It still wants the things of this world. Absolutely. Because you really have not crucified, mm -hmm. as Paul says, the flesh. Yeah. It's okay saying we are born again, we are saved, we accept Jesus Christ, <laughs> the blood of Jesus has cleansed us from sin. But the sin part is the nature that's been dealt with us. Okay. But what about the flesh? We heard, like I said, when Pastor Lina started speaking, I thought, you know, when Bruce asked me to help him out a bit, I'll, I'll try to later. <laughs> but the, 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 the whole thing about the flesh is where it starts. Because the craving of the flesh, the lust for the, the, the anger and the bitterness and jealousy and all these, these are fruits of the Spirit. Amen? Yeah. Of the seed of, of sin. Mm -hmm. And it's a fruit we have to deal with. Yeah. It's like what Pastor Lee said this morning. God can do so much, but there's so much He has allowed us to do. Yeah. God can do so much, but there's so much we also have to do. Yeah. And if we're not willing to let it down in this place, it will continually rise up. Yeah. Not to say I'm saved if you're sitting in the bar 50 times beers and whiskey and coming on beating your wife. Where's the salvation in that? Mm -hmm. You know better than the neighbor, if you start saying. So unless we've been to Gethsemane, unless we really have been to Gethsemane and spoke in the flesh and said, Lord, you, you are my Lord. Yeah. You are my Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus said it. He said, not my will, but thine will be done. Mm -hmm. How many of us said that? Mm -hmm. How many of us said, Lord, I lay myself on the altar. How many have said that? Mm -hmm. Lord, I, I become a living sacrifice for you. I lay myself on the altar. The problem with that altar is a living sac sacrifice on the altar is that the tendency to come up with it again. <laughs> it's good in the Old Testament there were dead sacrifices. Blood comes from the altar. They couldn't move. <laughs> they were acceptable because they're dead. <laughs> Unless we die to ourselves, and say to the Lord, Lord, I want to die to myself, to this flesh. I want to 
Like your will be done. See, that's the key in victory. That's the key in success walking in the Lord. That is the success in saying to yourself, I've got to walk with Jesus Christ. If you have not been to Gethsemane, you need to think about going to Gethsemane first. Where is your Gethsemane? Because if you have not been to Gethsemane, I encourage you to go to a place called Gethsemane. It's a place of surrender. That's where Gethsemane is for you. Where you can truly say, I lay down this life. I'm resurrected with Jesus Christ. Jesus took the two, uh, Peter and the two sons of, of Zebedee, and when he came back, he found them asleep. <laughs> he found them sleeping. And he woke them up and he said, Could you not even watch one hour and pray with me? He said, Watch and pray, let you enter into the same temptation. And believe me, temptation will come to all of us. No man can escape temptation. It will come continuously, daily, every minute, every second of the day. It continually comes. How many banging on that door of your heart? It wants to get in. It wants to corrupt you. It wants to destroy you. We say we are saved, but inside there is so much happening which is not really born again behavior. Hello? Anybody there? We need a change. We need to get to a place of Gethsemane where you can lay this uh, uh, body, this flesh, on the altar and say, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of, uh, let's go to the book of Ephesians. <coughs> Ephesians 6 and verse 12. It says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But against principalities, against powers, against rulers of wicked of darkness, and of the ruler of against spiritual wickedness in high places. This is the kind of battle we are in. The spirit is strong and, and can win the battle, but the flesh is weak. And that's where we get corrupted. That's where the doors stay mm. open. That's where the enemy can get in. That's where the devil loves to work in our lives. He presents us daily. With, 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 with things of the flesh, which we sometimes grab and feed the flesh. Yeah. Mm. We feed the flesh. Paul says in Galatians, go back to Galatians. Galatians chapter 3. And verse 1. O foolish Galatians, who has been with you that you should obey nothing? Not obey the truth before the eyes of Jesus Christ who have been evidently set forth, crucified among you. Mm. Who has bewitched us? What has corrupted us that we should not obey the truth? Mm. What is the truth? The truth is that sets us free. Mm. Free from the corruption of this world. Mm. Jesus said in, in the text in the book of John, chapter 8, verse 32, whom the Son set free. He's free indeed. We are free. If we heard it earlier, the word of the word of the Lord, and I wrote it down. The word of the Paul in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. And be not again, again, be not again angled with the yoke of body. How does that happen? Because we have not been to Gethsemane. We haven't denied the flesh. We haven't crucified the flesh. We haven't put down the flesh. It continuously, continuously raises up every time. The scripture talks about, the, the, you know, laying down the old man, you know? That doesn't mean your husband. Don't go laying down the old It means the old nature. We have to crucify it. We have to lay down. But the problem is it has no tendency to say that. It continues to raise up its ugly head. Mm. And then causes problem in the flesh. Mm. How many of us cry that food and say, Oh, why did I do that? Lord, have mercy mm. upon me. Mm. Unless we be to this family where, you know, the Bible says it was so tense at that time that the very sweat of Jesus became like blood. 